The Open Educational Resources Initiative fights for free textbooks. The Idaho State Museum is scheduled to reopen this October. And RADAR, the Idaho Regional Alcohol Drug Awareness Resource, continues to provide Boise State students with drug and alcohol information despite recent budget cuts. And Boise State has a new contract extension with Nike. Later, we'll hear from Cole Young with your Bronco Sports Update. These stories and more coming up next on your Boise State Newsline for this week of August 22nd, 2018. Jimena Bastillo of The Arbiter reports on the rise of OERs, or the Open Educational Resources Initiative, a term that all Boise State students should become familiar with in the coming semesters. The initiative aims to make the copyrights of textbooks, videos, audio, and or any other form of educational material freely available to the student body. Various campus groups include Associated Students of Boise State University, the library, eCampus, the Idea Shop, and others are taking steps to bring awareness to the benefits of OER on this campus. 54 of the 60 faculty who attended the 2018 OER Institute self-reported that they would begin using OERs to cover between 35% and 100% of their course required materials. According to Bob Casper, the instructional design specialist at the Idea Shop, if each professor can replace just one book averaging $60, they would be saving the student body $81,000 over the course of one semester. He goes on to state that both Boise State and Idaho State OER groups are currently working together to make a list of common lower division proposed texts. These would become available to all faculty teaching these courses. On a national level, the 15th annual Open Educational Conference will be held in Niagara Falls in New York in October. Twelve Boise State groups have submitted proposals to present, and all of them were accepted. One of the groups presenting at the conference will be our very own ASBSU. President Caleb Smith, Vice President Emily Rembert, and Secretary of Academic Affairs Michaela Melchert will all be traveling to Niagara Falls to take part in both a panel and traditional presentation. Smith says the goal is to present on how students can stimulate the process of getting OERs on campuses, maintaining that student advocacy is pivotal to the initiative's success. If you want to get involved at a student level, you can email ASBSU at asbsu at boisestate.edu or visit them in the student involvement offices above the BRC in the sub. Now, to clarify for those at home, mm -hmm. did I hear this correctly, Ben? Eighty-one thousand dollars being and saved, that, and that number could grow depending on how well this is implemented on our campus. And it all starts here, and it all starts with the students. I'm really excited. I as, as a well. student, it's going to be extremely important. Very important. Looks like we're moving on to the Idaho Regional Alcohol Drug Awareness Resource, otherwise known as the Radar Center. It's a program that works to provide information about drugs and alcohol to Idaho residents and Boise State students. Despite budget cuts to the program in the last year. The staff continues working hard to educate about substance use and abuse, as reported by David Cauley, director of the Radar Center. Dan Arnold says, in order to offset the loss in funding, the center is working to make more of their information available online. Many of the print resources are available on the website, and even more are free to check out through the center. The center cut back to a four-day schedule a couple years ago, and recently went down to a three-day schedule operating Monday through Wednesday. This, according to Arnold, is one of the major impacts of the previous year's loss of the Millennium Fund, the state funding that was reappropriated as reported by Taylor Munson in 2017. The Radar Center also participates in several events, conferences, and resource fairs. For those interested, the center's website and social media contain more updated information. Together, the print and video libraries provide an immense and free resource for students interested in researching the program's mission. Unfortunately, because substance use is an issue that can sometimes carry a stigma, it is possible that some might not feel comfortable seeking help, but Arnold encourages people who might be reluctant to seek information. While these resources are always available, they are especially relevant at the start of the school year. For many students, especially freshmen, College may be the first time they are exposed to drugs and alcohol. According to Arnold, data is often focused on how many people use or abuse substances, rather than how many don't. Regardless of what relationship a student has with substances during the next school year, 
the Radar Center will continue to inform those who seek it. I know when I got into high school and, and even college in some ways, this was something I was not very familiar with. It's great to see Idaho is taking steps to address this. Completely agree. It's really important for all students, not just freshmen though. Incredibly important. The Idaho State Museum is scheduled to reopen on October 12th after several years of much needed renovation. Construction and expansion of the building began back in August of 2014. This is the first major renovation of the building since its inception in 1950. So far, the project has costed more than $17 million in private and state funds. The goal is to not only change the way the building looks, but the way that the history of Idaho is presented. The new museum not only aims to be more relevant in a modern day, but relevant to more of Idaho. According to Ryan Gerliff, development director for the museum, it will all focus on the unique geographic locations and histories of Idaho. New to the museum is that of Idaho's five federally recognized Native American tribes. The ISHS partnered with several of said tribes in order to accurately and respectfully tell their stories. One of the multimedia exhibits will contain both animated videos and spoken narration of the tribe's creations and stories. Another exhibit aimed at younger visitors called the Boomtown Exhibit, a multimedia exhibit about the Big Burn, one of the largest fires in U.S. history, and a virtual bike ride through historic Pocatello and Boise. According to Gerliff, there will be a number of permanent exhibits on display, as well as a rotation of around 50,000 artifacts. Be sure to check this out in October. 50,000? About 50,000. It's a lot. It's actually pretty crazy. Now let's hear from our colleague over at the Arbiter, Jimena Bastillo, about a new Albertsons in the Boise area. Thanks, guys. The Albertson on Broadway officially opened on July 20th. Albertson Company's communication manager, Kathy Holland, says that the concept changed from Market Street, Idaho to Albertson's Broadway was influenced by the customers in the community who have lived in the neighborhood for several years. The keeping of the Albertson's name was also focused on the store's connection to the community. But Holland also specified that there are details that make this Albertson's a different twist on the past. Albertson's Broadway brings a different concept to Albertson's stores by focusing on fresh and local meals and produce. Upon entering the store, there are food stations where customers can place an order and watch their food be prepared. According to Holland, the bigger produce section also is strikingly different than other Albertsons before it. There are also more local products in the, in the stores and store-made items created from scratch featured in the bakery. And the chocolatier even makes chocolate in-house. Back to you guys. Thanks, Amanda. Wow, that was really cool. You know, I went there yesterday, and ben, yeah. I couldn't believe how far they've come in just this one year. They've actually had a lot of incredible stuff there. If you haven't gone, you should definitely go over and check it out. It's really sweet. It really is pretty cool. All right, well, it looks like on July 12th, Boise State and Nike agreed on a six-year contract extension valued at more than $2 million per year. According to the Boise State Athletics Department, the agreement was approved from the Idaho State Board of Education. The all-sport agreement, which will run through the years of 2024-25, will be almost double what the Broncos had received in the previous contract with Nike. I think that's pretty incredible, and if I'm not mistaken, I think the Pac-12 is going to Adidas, so it's really interesting that the, uh, the Mountain West is staying with Nike. Pretty cool. I'm it down is, for it. It is some pretty cool stuff. Now we're going to hand it over to our Bronco Sports Update with Cole Young. Cole, how are we doing? Oh, we're doing great over here, Ben. All right. Well, even though Bronco football hasn't kicked off just yet, we found something just as exciting to report. The Boise State eSports team has returned and is ready to take on their second season. This is the first varsity competitive gaming team to be sponsored by a Mountain West institution. Last fall, members of the Education Technology Department, Chris Haskell and Brett Shelton, led the team to success in their debut season despite lack of funding and resources. BSU now houses the largest eSports program in the nation which broadcasts its matches on a free online video game streaming service called Twitch. Esports teams will also have several matches on campus this year as the season progresses and will eventually get their own space in the Albertsons Library. This space will consist of a 6,400 square foot battleground with 100 gaming stations. 60 students have already joined the team, but for those who want to check out this growing sport, the team is holding tryouts this Friday, August 24th and Saturday, August 25th. The season then opens with a Rocket League match against Troy on August 30th. Right on, Cole. Those are pretty cool. 
I have a feeling that all the gamers are going to come out of the woodworks for that one. I'm definitely going to go see it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to send it over to Joey Oles with your weekly weather update. Hey guys, welcome back to campus. Unfortunately, summer is over, but that doesn't mean the weather is going to start too. Let's take a quick look. So we start with 91, that's gonna be the high for the week. And as we go through the week, it's just gonna drop a little bit from like 84 to 82, nothing too bad. Uh, Sunday and Monday is gonna get a little cloudy, partly cloudy, nothing too major. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, we're just gonna round it back out. Gonna stay about the same, gonna stay kind of sunny. Let's talk about the smoke in the air. As you all know, we have a lot of fires going on and there's a lot of smoke inhalation happening. So make sure you take those proper precautions before going out. That's all I have for you. I'm Joey Oles, and remember, you gotta take the time to see the sunshine. Back to you guys. Thank you, Joey. And this might sound a little cynical, but I'm actually kind of excited for those clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Me as well. Me as well. That's gonna do it from all of us here at your Boise State Newsline. I'm Ben Kaiser. And I'm Doug Mason. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.